Hello, welcome all to NLP Summit 2024. My name is Iti Rastogi, and I'm here today with my colleague, Sagar Goyal. Um, both of us work as senior NLP engineers at DeepScribe, which is a medical AI scribing company. And today we are here to talk about Heal AI, which is our proprietary healthcare LLM. Let's take a quick look at our agenda. So we'll start with um, introducing our problem statement, specifically what is medical documentation and why is it so important? We will then walk you through uh, some of our experiments with GPT-4 um, and the issues that we uh, faced in the generated notes from there, uh, which actually led us to you know, uh, make a call on building our own LLM. And for Healy, I will be talking in detail about our data, about our training framework, um, about our evaluation metrics, um, how we use humans and automated uh, metrics to evaluate the generated nodes. And then um, in the end, we will conclude with our learnings and obviously what's next. Now, let's start with uh, what is Heal AI. So Heal AI is a 13 billion instruction fine-tuned model that is purposely built for medical documentation. It's all better, faster, and cheaper than an average human scribe. And through our own metrics, we will actually show you that it has proven to outperform both GPT-4 and Lama 2 13 billion models um, on this task of medical node generation. Now, you must be wondering why medical documentation? Like, why is it so important? Um, so here are some quick um, uh, facts for you. So 47% of clinicians in United States are burnt out and majority of them cite medical documentation as the primary reason. Apart from this, improper medical documentation can actually lead to providers and doctors uh, losing money because uh, they tend to be unsure of the codes um, that they are charging and they tend to like unbill, underbill um, their notes and which leads to like, you know, actual money that's being lost. So with this, uh, let's take a look at a sample medical note. So a medical note is basically a written summary of the conversation between the doctor and patient. And it contains four main sections. The first is subjective, which includes the symptoms and conditions of the patient as expressed by them. Then we have objective, which includes the findings of the physical examination conducted by the doctor. Uh, then assessment, which includes the provider's um, diagnosis of the patient's illness. And then last but not the least, treatment plan, which includes like, you know, all the steps that they want the patient to take, any medications, labs that they ordered, so on and so forth. So now that you can see that, you know, this is a complex piece of document and um, all of us know that, you know, GPT-4 has really turned the table and it does very well on general NLP tasks. So we were curious on, you know, how it would perform on this particular problem. So for this, we took um, a snippet of our transcript, which is the doctor-patient conversation, combined it with uh, different prompting techniques, uh, passed it through GPT-4 to actually generate a medical note. And we realized, like, you know, through different experimentations that by giving, um, you know, detailed explanation on how the task should be performed, along with few short examples, really helped GPT-4 in generating, you know, meaningful notes. But even with that, uh, we noticed there were a lot of inconsistencies in the notes. So next, I will walk you through the four major issues that we observed. Um, so the first thing that we noticed was that the model had... Um, kind of very difficulty in understanding the nuances of conversational language. So anytime when we encountered that the patient was unsure or unclear of their symptoms, uh, the model would almost always, um, you know, inaccurately summarize this. There was like a high tendency of being sure of the answers that the model is generating. Um, next, we observed hallucinations. So all of you are like already aware of what hallucinations are. And here, what we noticed was that, you know, in certain cases, it's very common in medical documentation that certain pieces of information would be absent. Like, you know, if the, if the doctor didn't order any labs, then, you know, the order section under plan would be empty. But here we noticed that, you know, even though that the patient was just visiting for dizziness, the model had a huge tendency of generating something. And in this particular case, it actually generated about like, you know, patient being educated on colon cancer, which is not at all related. Next is another interesting observation. Um, this was uh, this kind of made us believe that, you know, the model is lacking some medical context because here, like the correct 
medications that were being transcribed, uh, the model was still kind of generating notes in which these medications were replaced. So we could see like, you know, insulin, which is like kind of more synonymous uh, to diabetes than, you know, to a tumor. The model was like kind of not able to uh, make this observation or understand this concept. Um, and the last one is, uh, again, really interesting. In, in, and this is in terms of like, you know, what kind of words are being generated by the model. So because it's a prof medical note is a professional document, you want like, you know, medical terms being used to summarize the information. Uh, so, you know, things like belly or eye doctor uh, should be replaced by more medical terms like abdomen or optometrist. Uh, but that was not happening. And this kind of really annoys the provider because um, this reflects very poorly on their acumen. So given all these challenges and issues, we realized that, you know, we need to build our own LLM. And the first thing that you do when you are building an LLM or any machine learning model is to look at the data. And at DeepScribe, we had three types of data. We have doctor-patient conversations. We have our uh, scribed notes, which are either scribed by humans or AI. And then we have EHRs, which are patients' past medical records. And if you will notice that all of this would contain a lot of PHI, which is like, you know, protected health information. And we had to be really careful when we are using this kind of data. HIPAA has stipulated 18 PHI tags, which include things like name, address, location, and any data that's handling this kind of information needs to be very secure. So in order to be ethical and responsible, in our uh, usage of this data, we decided to de-identify all our data before uh, training any model. And uh, if you move to the next slide, uh, you will see uh, snippets of how this data looks like. So here you can see that in the first snippet, you know, we replaced the name of the patient uh, with uh, you know the the correct tag, which was like person and so on and so forth for organization and date time. And this actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise for us because through this, we could almost like you know reduce any risk of data leakage through our model. We could build trust and safety amongst our customers, enabling them to you know use our product with more confidence, and then at the same time prevent any model bias that may arise because of any race or gender. Um, and we used uh, the Presidio model, which is developed by Microsoft for doing the identification. Now that we have seen um, our data, I will hand it over to Sagar to walk you through the process of uh, building Heal AI. Uh, thank you, Edi. Uh, so uh, let's build Heal AI. So when we started on this journey of building our own model based on all of this data that we had we started by looking at how do a human how does a human scribe actually create a note or scribe a note and i think like high level there are uh, four steps one is like they would look at the transcript and uh, of the conversation and mark the relevant text uh, then they would uh, summarize the relevant text that they find into a note which is for a certain category that we saw earlier and then eventually they would combine all the node categories into a single more comprehensive node and make any final adjustments as needed. In the AI world, this maps to uh, retrieval, node generation, and post-processing. Uh, if you look at like, and I think like this looks very familiar in the recent times, this is pretty much what retrieval augmented generation is. So I think uh, giving a quick summary, it's basically we have a query based on which you would re uh, retrieve the corresponding uh, relevant text. Uh, there would be a prompt which would take that text and eventually generate a note by sending it into the LLM. Um, and the response would be the final note that we want to look at. For our purposes, the retriever was basically a com combination of a classification and embedding model. And the generator was our own domain specific LLM that we created. Uh, so the how does it look like when we look at actual data, right? So this is a quick transcript snippet that uh, we got based on patient interaction. The retriever would mark the relevant text that exists for a medication section of the node. And then our generator will finally create the section based on the node that we had. And I think like this, 
entire design addresses a bunch of challenges i think uh, it breaks down the complex task into in extracting the right information and node generation where the retriever is actually trying to find as much information as it can and the llm is making sure that we create the node in the right manner and it's interesting to know that how they both are able to complement each other and fix each other's errors as well uh we also realized that uh, in the company we had a lot of data which kind of uh, mapped to this kind of a framework which allowed us to get very high quality uh, data to train these kind of models and also a very common problem with llms is like long context tasks and they're not very good at it so this eventually breaks that task down into like uh, smaller context tasks which the llms perform very well at Uh, when we set out to train our models there were multiple decisions that we wanted to make we wanted to stick with an open source based model and determine a lot of further things being a startup i think it was very important for a business to be fast to build something which is fast efficient something we can quickly iterate over but something which is also uh, still good uh based on some quick evaluations uh, i think we found that a llama 13 billion model even when lora fine tuned was much better than a 7 billion model which was uh, fully fine tuned and we also realized that anything above the realm of around 20 to 30 billion parameter model becomes very hard uh, to deal with because the training times go up deployment times go up and inference times go up as well uh we had a local hardware setup like a local gpu machine which is an 8 gpu machine and we wanted to stick mostly to using that so that we can save costs on training we are not relying on other uh, services and reducing dependencies uh, on other services as well but interestingly we ideally wanted to train only on four gpus because we wanted multiple mles to be able to work on this setup and not blocking each other out and under these multiple constraints uh, we ch- chose the llama to 13 billion model and trained it with a lora style training uh, with state of the art technology is like deep speed zero flash retention and various other techniques enabled and yeah so we were able to train it with a very good batch size with quick iterations and able to uh, get a very good model So now in this building of this model stage uh, once we had this training framework we had three different steps in the training the first step was continued pre training uh, this basically involves taking the base model and giving it a lot more information about the medical world and other worlds as well so we continued adding more information to the model by creating a data set which includes a proprietary medical data which is based on a lot of transcripts notes and bunch of other stuff then there is a uh, public medical data things like medqa pubmed qa and bunch of other things as well and then there is also non medical public data which we found that can be actually useful if we uh, put it in the right manner there is a separate paper out as well from our side uh, which we can later refer to and just with this we found that our model was actually able to beat gpt4 on pubmed qa public benchmark then comes the second step which is instruction fine tuning this primarily involved giving the model the capability to follow instructions which are uh, like uh, more like prompt uh, which look like pretty much like prompts and be able to do a wide variety of medical tasks uh, and to give this capability we went with the open orca data set which is uh, a very which is a data set which contains a wide diverse set of tasks and most of the responses are gpt4 generated uh, and yeah we stuck to the gpt4 component of it mainly to ensure that the data quality still remains high uh, coming to the third step which is i think the most uh, crucial step which comes in this is deep scribe task specific fine tuning and this primarily gives the model the capability to understand what the rag prompts look, look like what the retrieved text might look like and give it a better idea about how to create a more comprehensive note that the doctors actually prefer and this involved both trainings of like few short training as well as zero shot training and giving the model capabilities uh, we evaluated our model on the metric of semantic similarity uh, based on the ground truth response which we had and we evaluated each iteration of this model and as you would see in the chart each iteration of the model is 
improving over the other um, and the two tasks that we evaluate on is like note creation of the subjective section of the note and on the plan section of the note and overall you'd see like we have about 300 percent improvements over the llama base model and about roughly 50 uh, i think like 30 to 50 percent over the llama chat model so I think now we have the model, right? And now we have to deploy it. And like when, again, I'm gonna go back to the business use case of saving costs and making sure everything is efficient uh, as much as we can make it. So we deployed it on a G5X large machine on AWS. Uh, it's a machine with eight N GPUs. And the reason we use that is because uh, these are much, much cheaper than A100 GPUs, which are also more accessible. Uh, for scaling our product. Um, we also realized that this machine has about 24 GB memory on the GPU, which makes a 16-bit Llama 13 billion model not fit on this machine. And that's when we do quantization. We realize that the impact of quantization is there. We lose some sort of quality on recall and some other metrics when we do more and more quantization based on the techniques we had in research at that time. But we still ended up deploying the 8-bit version because we wanted it because it was still good enough and pretty much acceptable by the providers. And but right about that time comes Mistral. Uh, they come up with their 7 billion model, which is equivalent on almost all public benchmarks to a 13 billion model and even better than uh, Lama 213 on certain uh, benchmarks. And then we do all the further steps that we have, for all the steps we have talked about from Mistral, and we are able to achieve similar quality as the unquantized Lama 13 billion, and the providers love it, and we deploy the Heal AI version too. A quick peek into the uh, impact on the cost. This brings down our costs to less than 10%, like over a thousand X decrease in cost, and uh, compared to what we would do with a prompt engine in GPT-4 or like a human scribe. This makes it completely feasible and very uh, much scalable as well for our business. So we do realize that in spite of all these sem uh, metrics like semantic similarity and bunch of other things that we can develop more quantitative metrics, I think medical note creation has a certain kind of nuance to it, which basically means that we need to understand specific things like writing quality, accuracy, completeness, and organization, which can be hard to measure based on quantitative metrics. Uh, and that's where I think uh, we define the specifics. Uh, that's where our human experts come in to evaluate the node on these four big verticals. And that's uh, also where we evaluate uh, four different uh, versions, I guess, or like four different types of solutions to node creation. And we realize that the Heal AI model that we build like the version 2 is almost uh, perfect in some sense uh, we get a 4.9 score compared to a 4.1 of gpt4 prompt engineered and a 3.2 on uh, human scribe node so yeah that is it like that's how we build the model uh, it's doing great it's already in production providers love it and uh, we've gotten great feedback now like conclusion and what's next, I guess. So I think it's about like the domain specific, we did find out that the domain specific smaller LLMs can compete with uh, GPT-4 as well as humans in tasks uh, in specific domains. Uh, we are able to provide high quality notes with and solve multiple tasks using this model. And re this reduces the provider's workload a lot. Uh, we did find Laura training can be actually very effective and inexpensive in an industry setting, which is uh, often the business metrics we're looking at. And at a high level, we did find like the AI is actually better than humans in this specific case in terms of quality, cost, and also turnaround time. Uh, what's next for us is we're going to be expanding to more medical documentation tasks, addressing uh, capabilities which are currently out of domain. Uh, we're going to be adding more uh, personalization of notes for every provider to improve further customer satisfaction, uh, adding features like AI-enabled edits to the notes, and a bunch of other business KPIs that we've been trying to uh, address here. And you can see quick snippets here around uh, the provider satisfaction that we've been able to achieve. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think at this point. Uh, so yes, thank you, and we're open to any questions on uh, questions and answers.